Hello class, welcome to lesson 8.4, which is all about rate of change. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to find rates of change and solve problems involving rates of change. Let's start by talking about what rate of change is. So rate of change is how the dependent variable, so remember a couple sections ago we talked about how the dependent variable is y. So how the dependent variable changes with respect to the independent variable, and we talked about how the independent variable is x. So basically this is saying, how does x impact y? That is our rate of change. And our rate of change can be positive, it can be negative, and it can be zero. So if we look at this graph over here, where we're talking about airplane position, okay? So vertical, remember, is like how high it is in the sky. And then horizontal position is it moving you know, forward towards your destination. So vertical up and down, horizontal left and right. So if we look at this graph, you can see from A to B, it does not move up. It stays at the same vertical height, the same vertical position. That means there was no change here. It was constantly at 2,000 feet in the air. Then you can see from B to C, it's going up, right? It's getting higher in the sky. And then from C to D, it's getting lower in the sky. D to E, it's staying the same. And then E to F, it jumped up really high fast, right? It's steeper than this other line. Well, we are going to find the rate of change from point B to point C. And the way that you find the rate of change is you do the change in y over the change in x. So remember, y is always the up and down. So if we're going from b to c, b, I'm actually going to change color so it's a little easier to see on that graph since the line's already green. So b is at 2,000 feet. So 2,000 feet. And C is all the way up at 2,400 feet. So to find the difference, you can subtract them, right? Like, how far is it to go from 2,000 to 2,400? Well, that's 400 feet, right? It went up 400 feet. Then the change in X is its horizontal position. So we need to be careful as we're looking at these. You can see each line is worth 200. So that means that this is 400, and C would be at 800. So to go from 400 to 800, that's also 400, right? And if it's ever a number that you are unsure of um, it right off of your head, like 800 minus 400 doesn't tend to be um, something that's super difficult. Sometimes you might have... Um, a moment where you know you forget and it takes a second that's totally fine but it's easier numbers to work with right so if they weren't easier numbers what you can do is you can take the new one so in this case the new was C and subtract the original okay and same thing here I took the C value and subtracted the B value so moving on it changed 400 feet. It got 400 feet higher, and it moved 400 feet horizontally. What's 400 divided by 400? That is just 1. Any number divided by itself is 1. But what does that mean? That means um, for every foot higher, the plane moved 1 foot right, we'll say. Or 1 foot horizontally might be a better. Okay, so... For every one foot higher, the plane moved one foot horizontally. If we had had one over two, something like that, you'd say for every one foot higher, it moved two feet horizontally. Okay, so this is always your up and down, and this is always your left and right in this problem. Now, <clears throat> I want you to look and find the rate of change from point C to point D. So you're going to do the same thing that we did on the last one. You find point C, find point D, and compare them. I want to point out 
two things to you before you get started. Point D, notice it is not on one of these lines. So point D, if you come down, that's going to be at 1,100 instead, right? Because we said each of these spaces is 200. So careful with that. And then also notice it's going down. So that means your answer should be a negative answer, okay? So why don't you go ahead and try to find out that rate of change? Good luck. Okay, hopefully you ended up at negative 4 over 3. But just in case you didn't, let's talk through how I got there. So what I did was I looked at point D and I said it's at 2,000 high. So I wrote 2,000 and then horizontal position was 1,100. So I wrote 1,100 on the bottom. Then I took point C and I said vertically it's at 2,400. So I subtracted 2,400. In these problems, you're always going to subtract between the two numbers, okay? Um, then we had C was horizontally at 800. So 2,000 minus 2,400 was a negative 400. 1,100 minus 800 is a positive 300. So equals negative 4 over 3. And what that means, you didn't have to type this bottom part here. I just did for practice. Um, so what that negative 4 over 3 means is for every 4 feet the plane goes down, the plane is moving 3 feet horizontally. Okay. Now let's try using or finding the rate of change from a table instead of from a graph. So the table below shows the amount of money Josh makes working at the state park. Find the rate of change and interpret its meaning. Okay, so we have two points. Remember, we always start on the top with the y values. So I'm just going to start at my new value, 85.50 minus 76. So those are the two amounts of money he has made. And then with that 85.5, 9 is grouped with it, so I'm going to put 9 right below that, and 76 is grouped with 8, so I put 8 below the 76, and then I just subtract. So 85.5 minus 76 is 9.50, or 950 since we're talking money, and then 9 minus 8 is 1, and our x values represent hours. So what this means, our rate of change is $9.50. That means that Josh earns $9.50 per one hour. Or you could just write, Josh earns $9.50 per hour. Okay, You don't have to include the one there since it's just a one. All right. The table shows the amount of money remaining in Laura's account after a certain number of weeks. Find the rate of change and interpret its meaning. So let's look at this one quickly, and then you are going to try to solve it on your own. So after four weeks have gone by, Laura has $160. After six weeks have gone by, Laura has $120. So notice her dollar amount got smaller. That means that the rate of change is going to be positive, negative, negative or zero. It should be negative. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and find the rate of change and type that in. Once you have done that, I want you to just think about what would its meaning be, but you don't have to type the meaning in as part of your answer. Okay, good luck. Okay, hopefully for this problem you got negative 20 as the rate of change. And its meaning would mean Laura's account goes down $20 every week or per week. And the way you would get that is you would take the 120, so the y value that you stopped at, and subtract the first y value. Then 120 is grouped with that 6, so I need to start with 6 minus, and 160 
is grouped with 4. So I write the 4 below the 160. So 120 minus 160 is negative 40. 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 40 divided by 2 equals negative 20. So that's how I found the rate of change. Now let's compare rates of change. A CD spins at different speeds when playing songs on the inside tracks versus playing songs on the outside tracks. Compare the rates of change. So just to help you guys visualize this, um, I know not many of you actually use CDs, uh, but a CD is a circle, and it has another circle kind of cut out in the middle. And what this problem is talking about is when a CD spins, that's how the songs are getting played. And um, the songs are stored going around the outside of the CD. Some songs are stored really close to that first circle, the inside circle. And some songs are stored really close to the outside. So you can see that the outside ones have a much bigger circle to go around. That's why in order to play a song, a CD has to spin at different speeds. So if you're listening to a song that's stored really close to the inside, it's going to spin at a different speed than if you were listening to a song at the out, that's stored at the outside of the CD. Okay, so we're going to figure out what those two different speeds are. So inside, let's figure out the rate of change for inside. This table can look a little confusing, um, so let's break it down. We have the number of seconds, so 0, 2, and 4. So that's how long the song has played. And then the number of revolutions. On the inside, so we're talking about that red arrow I drew, after zero seconds, it has not done a complete revolution. So a revolution is when it has done a complete circle. Okay. After two seconds, the inside has done 16 revolutions. So it's gone around 16 times in order to play that song. And after four seconds, it's gone around 32 times. So let's figure out the number of, uh, or the rate of change for the inside. So you can see we have three times that we can use to determine our inside rate of change. You can use either the first one and the second one, or you could do the second and the third, or you can do the first and the third line. I personally, whenever there's a zero, I like to use the zero. So I'm going to use just these first two points. And it's going to be just like the last two problems we did. So this is my y value. So I'm going to do 16 is where I stopped minus zero over two because two gets paired with that 16, right? It's on the same line minus zero. 16 minus 0 is just 16. 2 minus 0 is just 2. 16 divided by 2 means er, is 8. And the label is revolutions. So I'm going to abbreviate that. Revolutions per second. So that means to play the inside track, it's circling around eight times every second just to play that song. Then I'm going to erase this just to make it a little easier. I don't know why I grabbed the super small eraser. That was not smart of me. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the outside tracks. And the way that we look at the outside tracks is that I'm going to use these Y values along with these x values. The seconds never change, right? So outside, again, you can use the first two lines. You could use the last two lines, or you could use the first and last line. 
Again, I like zeros. That worked out really nicely, right? Subtracting zero. So I'm just, again, going to use the first two. But you could use, like I said, other combinations of these. So I stopped at six minus zero over two, because that two gets grouped with that six, minus zero. So six minus zero is six, two minus zero is two. So that means the rate of change is three, and then my label is the same, because it's the same table. Three revolutions per second. So you can see that the inside track spins faster, right? So you would just write the inside track spins faster. And track is just another word for song. Um, some of you may be familiar with that term and some of you might not. So I just wanted to clarify. So that's all you have to do. You just need to find the two different rates of change and then say something about um, how they're related. In this case, I could say the inside spins faster, or I could have said the outside spins slower. Um, up to you, whatever you want. And then just a quick little summary. Remember, if it's going up, it's a positive rate of change, which means you're having an increase of some sort. If it goes down, it's negative or is a decrease. If it stays the same, it is a zero rate of change. It's not changing, um, and that's what it means. So if you have any questions about this lesson, please be sure to ask for some help, and I'm more than happy to help you. Have a great day.